Well, I hope you guys didn't get your TVP fix just yet, because we are heading into a match between the Shamblers Protoss and Top Ramen's Terran, and we're back on Derelict, a map by Biddy B. Shambler will be in the bottom left, and Top Ramen will be in the top right! Dude, Top Ramen, TR, Top Right, TR, it's fate. He will surely win this game. This is Cosmonarchy, that's what this game is all about. It's about being cosmic and also being a monarch, so uh, are you the cosmic king? Will you be the cosmic ruler? by learning and mastering all 50 units per race and not having to worry about supply or upgrades and also having a uh, much higher unit selection. It's like 252, so it's trying to be unlimited, but for technical reasons, it isn't just yet. And uh, of course, multi-building select. Dude, come on, tell me that doesn't sound epic. Well, if it doesn't sound epic to you, then maybe you should check it out anyway and see if it actually is epic because a lot depends on the implementation. And it's been seven long years of development for Cosmonarchy. We are making it better and better day by day. Hope you guys are enjoying that. Cooking up some nice stuff in the background with the Zerg tutorial and some other content that I know people will end up enjoying. As well as uh, some interesting balance changes, some improved visuals. Always nice to have. Always nice to have. We got Shambler doing his Gateway Scout. Or I think that, that was actually a Scout earlier than the Gateway, but I could be wrong. And then, uh, of course, the Mason going to go in to scout as well for Top Ramen. He's going for a Fulcrum first. This is a fairly old game. Uh, let me go ahead and give you the date. Yeah, it was uh, the 17th of April. So uh, I'm recording this on the 28th of April. Uh, so it has been over a week since this game was played. I'm sure that both of these players play this matchup a little bit differently now, mostly because uh, Protoss versus Terran has seen a lot of play because we got a lot of Protosses and our, a lot of our newer players like Top Ramen and EUD are Terrans. So uh, I think Passarinho is Protoss, if I'm not mistaken. So there's there's also new Protosses, right? Ecalypso, obviously, a guy who's been featured on the channel a bunch of times already. Uh, fairly new Protoss player. We got Crank in there, Crank and Dow. He's uh, a new Zerg player trying to trying to roll up the ranks, join the, the likes of Taco Cake and Jackie Lansky and Art of Turtle, who are uh, fairly new Zergs as well to the project. But, you know, they've been around for maybe Maybe a month now, uh, a little bit around that time, uh, whereas Crank is much newer. So anyway, uh, I think it's worth uh, worth shouting out some of the new guys. Uh, but yeah, we've seen a lot of TVP, right? Hapsea is one of the players who plays the most. Hamster, another guy who was Zerg and changed to Protoss. Oh, Vulture coming on in, but Shambler not able to dive on it. Maybe he'll be able to now. You gotta watch out for the Legionnaires. They can and will stick to you, but I think that should have been an attack order uh, from Shambler. He would have been able to continue the push. The way that the Legionnaire works is that as long as I think it's within three range, it'll be able to dive onto the unit that has that uh, circle on it. And the way that you get that circle effect on it is by attacking it with a Legionnaire. So any Legionnaire can dive to any other Legionnaire's push. Uh, so that ends up being pretty neat. I think it uh, works out visually. A little bit of a harassment here, but it's it's mass Legionnaire right now. We got some nice mines. We got some nice amount of vultures. Double fulcrum. So I do think that the uh, the legionnaires will end up getting overwhelmed here. But losing those two vultures, that was a little bit of a misplay. So now it's very different, right? Top Roman has to pull, pull, pull in back. Think about where he wants to place additional mines. Uh, and uh, the way that the mines work, by the way, is that they uh, are lobotomy mines. They are stun mines instead of damage mines. So when you trigger them, uh, you will be uh, stunned. And if you just blow them up before they... Um, before they can actually detonate for real, you'll just get slowed. So that's the way that it works. Guaranteed some kind of effect if your unit is nearby. You can attack them from a range if you have detection, right? So still that as well. Now, this is kind of cheeky from Shambler, but I like it. He's gone two gate. He's made consistent Legionnaires. He picks the early number of vultures here. And so he feels somewhat secure. And he's going to go ahead and put down an expansion with pace. Behind this, Top Ramen only now getting his quarry add-on. Uh, the quarry add-on provides you with uh, an additional worker production. So it takes the time that it would take to build two workers. So we're going to see Shambler stretch ahead in terms of workers. Uh, very similar to how like the commsat works out. If you think about that from StarCraft 1, where you add the commsat, that's going to mean that you, uh, don't, you have roughly uh, lost uh, the amount of time as it takes to make two uh, SUVs. The same is here, but then you start making them two at a time. So you can catch back up and eventually supersede the opponent if they haven't put down their own extra worker count, uh, worker queue, which is indeed what Shambler has done by expanding. You can also go for an embassy as Protoss, which is the new forge. Uh, it's completely different. It doesn't do upgrades because we don't have any. So, uh, you know, Top Ramen's thinking about putting down some mines. He's scouting around. He sees the Dracodens. He sees the Legionnaires. So this is a, a fight that uh, this number of vultures, I think it would be close, uh, but I also think that the Legionnaires would cause a lot of 
flummoxing. Now, let's see what he wants to do, because he's just stunned a bunch of those units. He can choose to dive on it. I feel like that could have been an opportunity to play around that last existing mine and maybe take shots uh, at, at some of those uh, Legionnaires specifically, try to thin the herd, uh, maybe give himself a better, better time. You don't want to fight around this as much because they have to go through so many of them, and if you're standing, like, here, then the stun will just hit your own units, right? So you really got to watch out for that. You still, just like uh, with the, the the mines that you would deal with in StarCraft 1, where you plant them and then you want to blow them up if you're moving forward with your siege line, you still don't want to have that kind of situation happen uh, with stuns. You'll, you'll still be afflicted, right? So this is a good opportunity to charge on, on in. Shield regeneration is also cut off when uh, there's a stun effect. So this is really nice so far. Really good uh, good rounds here from, from Raman to charge in and try to dismantle this push when he can. Looks like all the Legionnaires are gone, and now the Vultures can just dive onto the Draconins if he wants to. But it looks like he's got his Phalanx out. He has made the add-ons for those. Fairly expensive, but you can still go for it. And the, uh, the Phalanxes can indeed come on in. You know, when we first made the change to make the Palladium a Tier 1 add-on, uh, which is, you know, it used to be... Uh, a tier two thing. You'd have to make at the Atlas, which is a very expensive structure to make it happen. Um, now, uh, instead of that, uh, you can get it, but it's very expensive. Uh, you can get it from the word go. And when we first made that change, uh, Shambler was playing as Terran, and he was experimenting with bio pushes with a single phalanx. And I thought that was actually really neat. I'm not sure that anybody will do that versus Protoss, but versus Zerg, it absolutely could happen. It it's very similar to, you know, what you might expect out of a uh, StarCraft 1 matchup for this. Now, there are no melee units here, so Shambler can't really commit to attacking things like the mines, uh, attacking through the mines, because the mines will just uh, block it. So he can't really commit to attacking with that. You now, if he had Legionnaires or Zealots, he could probably charge forward, and all of these mines would end up triggering on kind of like the same unit or whatever. Um, at least a good number of them would end up uh, over-stunning, and there's no value in that. Part of the pseudo wall that he set up here is going to be his embassy. So Shambler on to three production queues. Same for Top Ramen, though. He's got his treasury, which is like a tempo structure. You build it fast, so you want to take a base fast. And it's cheaper, uh, but it doesn't train workers directly. It has all the same add-ons as the ministry, though. All right, we've got uh, some Legionnaires and some Hierophants joining the fight. These are new units. The uh, Legionnaire, obviously, we saw earlier, but the Hierophant, it uh, debuffs units, making them slower. And if they get enough of that stacked up, uh, this, the slow is always the same rate, but they can stack that debuff and then eventually it turns into an attack speed slow as well. Uh, so as long as they hit the same unit five times or more, uh, they'll also have slowed attack speed. It's pretty cool. And uh, if the unit dies well, with that slowed attack speed, it then injects attack speed to all of the Protoss' allies in the area around the unit's corpse. Now this could be a big, big opportunity for Top Ramen to try to get a flank going, but I think his units have already been spotted, so now he's got to try to run back. And remember what I said about the Legionnaires with the mines? Well, maybe that won't even matter because now the Witnesses are alive. Well, okay, the Vulture's in a spot where they're basically giving themselves up so that the Phalanxes can get some really nice shots, and all the melee is gone, so the yeah, Shambler has to immediately fall back there, otherwise all of his uh, Striders would, would have been clumped up massively and would have just gotten splattered. Treasury coming up here for a fast third base. This mine is just going to stun a, a scribe that tries to go over here, but I think the scribe will still be able to put down the structure first. The witness in the main, uh, but the atlas is coming up, and I don't think Shambler is going to notice that because it is pocketed all the way in the top right. Now the treasury thinking about moving somewhere. Does he want to take the three o'clock and hope that Shambler doesn't scout it, or does he want to try to t hold the low ground over here for his third? It's sort of like an open question right now. Phalanxes, Goliaths. See what else he can do. Vulture's just scouting out, but there's a lot of phalanxes, and this is a very scary point for Top Ramen. I, I would be very, very scared of picking a fight here. You've only got two vultures. You've got eight phalanxes, uh, but or, or nine of them even. But you know, you know how brittle that is. You know how uh, how quickly that can turn. Look at that. Not exactly working out for him here. There's no mines. There's no coverage. Good targeting on the striders at the very least, but a lot of his units are, are going to end up getting busted. Now, finally, one of the mine, the last mine does end up going. The Goliaths are here, but that was a lot of expensive losses for Top Ramen. Sure, you also reset the Protoss army, but you can't really move out, it feels like, right now. He's putting down an anchor. I... If he had kept two more phalanxes alive, I feel like maybe you could move out here and be really effective. But, you know, he does at least clear the contain. So, you know, Shambler maybe could have spread his units out a little bit more and focused down a couple additional uh, phalanxes. Uh, but I do feel like that was really risky and, and could have gotten a lot worse for 
good old top ramen here, but he still is able to get it down. He's adding two more fulcrums behind this. We'll see what add-ons he ends up going, if any. A bunch of captaincies now that his atlas is done, uh, and a starport. So, all right, I like what I'm seeing here. He's basically upgrading all of his production. He's using this as an opportunity to secure his third base. He's uh, being a little bit lax on unit production, but it might not matter too much. Dropping the uh, anchor. We're going to see some sentinels be put down. That's where a lot of his money is going right now. Sentinels do cost Vespine uh, a little bit. It's a 50 Vespine per Sentinel, so it's not totally free on the tech resource, but Corey also coming down for additional production. The Witness is going to spot that. Third base up and running already for Shambler, so he should feel somewhat confident here. Uh, he does have more workers, but uh, it's not by a huge number, so, uh, you know, especially when this uh, extra Corey comes up, we're going to be talking about four worker production queues for everybody involved. Nine o'clock being taken by the Shambler. He's not known as a macro toss, but it seems like he's definitely been drilling that a lot. You know, he's, he feels like a guy who usually wants to just end the game as soon as he can. He is always on the lookout for uh, opportunities to, to end the game like that. Now, these Sentinels are finishing at what might be the perfect time, or maybe not. Maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, there's no Phalanxes here to splatter the Zealots. The Sentinels are absolutely getting ransacked here. But I think as the Phalanxes come in, he can be comfortable with that timing. Uh, he ended up trading, what, like three Zealots for, you know, as many Sentinels and also a, a whatever this structure was. It might have been a canceled structure. Um, and so that that's pretty scary, right? So very expensive. And uh, Top Ramen also being checked here. But the army can't really contend with all of the Phalanxes, right? We will have some mines over here. The Witness will be able to spot some of them. Moving up towards 12 o'clock, just scouting around. we got gateways coming at the... Uh, third base, I like this. I like the idea of, uh, you know, especially if it was further up, so it was like a sealed wall. Uh, versus the mech, you can't really run by as well if you have to go down here. Or even, you know, up here, you can split the army. So I, I actually do like that position. I like the idea of this uh, innovation, if you will, of Protoss is starting to use their structures as, uh, uh, their production structures as walls. And you want to build more gateways anyway, but instead of building them all in your main, you can do something else. Now, he's got a Crucible down. His Crucible is going to empower two out of three gateways and both of his Ancestral Archives, which are Tier 4 production structures for the Protoss. They're the highest tier of uh, sort of, as I call it, disciple production, which is like your standard gateway stuff, uh, gateway style units. So we'll see what ends up coming out of there. He's obviously been making Patriarchs already. The Phalanxes are going to go ahead and drop, but this is really, really dangerous for Top Ramen. Where are the counters? He's got a couple of units in his choke that could definitely come in and help. He's got four Madcaps fully stacked in this anchor. They're helping out massively, but the Archon can absolutely go to town here, and the Patriarchs are keeping all of his other units healthy. Trying to break this last Phalanx, it should be able to work out. We have another one deployed there, and it looks like without uh, losing his Archon... Oh, he's going to try to turn and fight. And again, this is really still dangerous for Top Ramen. He's going to end up not being able to finish off that Archon. Seraph with the Irradiate might out, out a little bit here. Okay, just a zoning Irradiate, nothing nothing too crazy. You can see it's a missile. It uh, It's it's not something that uh, you can just point and click, uh, but it will affect all units, so it's not like before. There we go, there's a nice one. Onto the Patriarchs. And you know, he's, he's gonna be fine because Irradiate does less overall damage. Oh no, he's actually gonna try to commit on to killing that Seraph. I feel like that's a overcommittal here. There are a couple of Phalanxes, two more just popping out as well. They're going to go ahead and deploy, and all of the Irradiate stacking up preventing shield regeneration, it's going to be huge versus Protoss. Unfortunately, though, it might still not be enough. I mean, he's got units on top of him. Another Irradiate goes down. Mm, I'm still a little bit worried, because remember, the follow-up here can be really deadly. These Sentinels need to lift off and come over here if he has any hope of coming in. Another Seraph pops out to Irradiate, but some of his own Masons get hit by it instead. Trying to make the spell casting happen. I think Shambo's totally forgotten about all these units over here. He can march in. He's definitely ahead in this match. And both of our players floating a lot of money as well during that whole procedure. Not quite able to get much happening here. We got the captains. He's got a lot of Seraph queued up. Spending down the money now. But I, I think I know which player I'm taking in this situation. Shambo's got all these gateway units in the treasury on the natural. That can go down anytime. Draconin's charging the ramp to finish off these phalanxes. They're helpless. They cannot defend themselves. There is no defensive matrix from the Seraph. You need the Azazel for that. A lot of uh, irradiates going down on all these units, but it's not going to be enough. I love the armor ran from the Seraph. It's, it does help out a little bit, but you can see there it ends up going down. GG's called. Can't bear the loss of his Seraph, and uh, that will be the end of the game. Well, oh, see, I, I told you, Shambler, even though he takes the fourth base, which surprises me a little bit there, he's also the guy who just charges in when he sees an opening, and he had the witnesses out for a long time. There was no star pad to detect earlier, no uh, vestry to detect earlier either. You know, those are two things that you can build as the Terran to afford yourself uh, early detection, uh, the Anseal and the Shaman in visionary mode. So those are things to, to point out, uh, but, uh, you know, Top Ramen has improved a lot in the matchup. He's also played a lot of the reverse matchup, where he's played a lot of Protoss versus Terran, so he's kind of, like, getting a sense of the matchup.
matchup from multiple angles. And uh, it's interesting to see what people are innovating for that. So stay tuned, because again, this game was like 10 days old. Uh, there's definitely more to come. So GG's, and we'll be back tomorrow for more Cosmonarchy. See you then.